So you look at the actual camera? Okay, I like it. <laughs> what? I said, okay, I like it. You like what? Being filmed. <sighs> Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel, my name is Chloe and... My name is Selma. And Selma is my sister, in case you can't tell. We don't look anything alike. That's a lie. What do you mean that's a lie? Comment look, if we... Look, look, look how brown you are. Look how white you are. Exactly. Today we are going to be filming my June wrap up. It's July, right? Yeah, it's July. Why, why did you pull a funny face? I just wanted to. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about all the books that I read in June. I have not got around to filming it yet, but you know, I'm going to I'm going to film it now. <laughs> and I don't have any of the books with me because towards the end of June I came back to visit my family, so all my books are in my apartment. I will probably insert them somewhere. But no, yeah, we're just going to talk about them and say what I thought. I think I had a relatively good month. I think so, I had a good month too. You didn't read anything. Oh. So in the month of June I managed to read nine books which is relatively good. I think that that's maybe one more than I read the month before that and there was a couple of months where I was kind of in a reading slump so I wasn't reading as much as I have in the past. I was also preparing for an exam so considering that I think I did pretty well with eight books. So the first book that I read in the month of June was Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Basterica. You might have seen that if you saw my birthday reading vlog. I will link it somewhere. Um, I didn't see that. No, because you're a fake fan. That's not true. I just forget that that's the wrong thing. I just don't have to... Oh. I really enjoyed this. This was a great book to start off my month. I think I knew going into it that I was going to really enjoy it and it didn't disappoint. Tender is the Flesh is essentially about a world where there is this virus that has infected all animals so you can no longer eat animal meat because if you do you will probably die. So instead of eating animals they've created this system where basically they breed human beings and eat human beings in the same way that we eat animals in the real world. So it's very interesting. It was a very interesting book. I think it had a lot to say about sort of what's the difference between a human life and an animal life. Why do we say that it's all right to eat animals when really we're not that different to them? And it was, I think, everything that I was expecting, everything that I wanted. In terms of gore, it was relatively mild. I think for a lot of people it would be quite disturbing. I found it all right because I usually enjoy gory things anyway. But it definitely was sort of, yeah, I don't, I, th I think it was moderately gory. Like, I think there was definitely room for it to be more gory, but I think that the author managed, what are you doing? What on earth does gory mean? Like, blood and guts and stuff like that. <laughs> but I think there was definitely room for it to become more gory, but the author sort of, sort of trod the line where it was like a perfect amount so that it was able to get across the sort of brutality, but also not make it so grotesque that... You know, brutality. it made... <laughs> brutality means, like, violence. But no, yeah, I think she did, like, a perfect job. And I gave it five stars, so as I said, it was a great way to start off the month. And I really enjoyed it. Let's go on to the next book that I read. This was also a book that I read in that vlog that I was talking about. It was Tunnel of Bones, which is the second book in the Cassidy Blake trilogy by Victoria Schwab. What are you doing? Singing Victoria, Victoria. I've spoken about City of Ghosts, which is the first book in that trilogy before on my channel, maybe a couple of times, definitely in a wrap up at some point. And I really enjoyed that book and I really enjoyed the second book in the trilogy as well. I'm particularly excited to get to the third book. So if you have not heard of the Casty Blake trilogy, it's basically about- What are you doing? <laughs> it is basically about this girl, Casty Blake, who can communicate with ghosts because she had a near-death experience where she basically died and then got sort of pulled back into life by a ghost. Now she's got a best friend who is a ghost who is called Jacob and he is very fun. Um, character to read about. We got a, to learn a little bit more about Jacob in the second book which I really enjoyed because like he was kind of there just as a secondary character you know just for a little bit of fun and you know as a supporting character to Casty Blake but I think in the second one we kind of peeled back a layer and we got to know a little bit of his like backstory which was really fun. The first one was set in Edinburgh which was 
probably my favourite of the two. The second one was set in Paris, which is a great setting, don't get me wrong, but I just felt that Edinburgh was a little bit more suited to the sort of creepy ghost vibes. I gave it four stars. I gave it four stars, as I said, I really enjoyed it. The next book that I read was The Falling in Love Montage by Kiara Smith. Or Kira Smith. I'm not actually quite sure how you pronounce it because I've seen people spell their names that way and be pronounced Kira. This was just your kind of, I'm going to say run of the mill, rom-com kind of thing where basically we're following a girl who says that she hates romantic comedies and that she's just into horror and she's very cynical and like she's just come out of a relationship and she can't really trust anyone. Um, and then she meets another girl who is the complete opposite and she is so basically it's set in Ireland which which I really enjoyed because I don't think I've really ever read any books set in Ireland. She meets this girl at a party who is like visiting from England or something like that and they get into a relationship but the one girl's like I don't want anything serious the other girl I don't I don't even know what the other girl thinks but the the one the main character she <laughs> she doesn't want anything serious so she's trying to sort of hold back and you know not have any feelings or anything like that and it basically centers around this uh, falling in love montage that they that they create where they basically come up with a list of different things that happen in romantic comedies like activities for them to try out which was a really interesting thing for a rom-com to be sort of centered around I don't really have much to say about it aside from the fact that I gave it 3.5 stars. I thought it was good, it's not the best. To be fair, I am not much of like a rom-com or a romance reader, I just... it's not really my thing. I'm not very good at critiquing romances, I think the reason that I didn't give it more is probably one because I'm not much of a romance reader, they don't really hit me in the same way that other books do. And also I just found it to be maybe a bit too YA for me, I believe it's YA so that would make sense but I think maybe I'm more of like an adult romance reader. I think it was a good book. I've heard that it's some people's favourites but like it definitely isn't a favourite for me. 3.5 stars is still a very, very good We're still talking about the rating. opposite one, right? Yeah. It's still a very good rating from me. Moving on to the next one. I feel like this video is just going to be so disjointed. The next book that I read was There's Someone Inside Your House. It's kind of pitched as a thriller. I wouldn't say it was thrilling most of the time. It really just gave me like eight, 70s or 80s cheesy slasher vibes, which is just everything that I love. The more books that I can find that kind of have those vibes, the, the happier I will be. One thing that I did notice is this book was written by Stephanie Perkins, who is usually a contemporary author, author I believe. I think this is like her first sort of foray into thrillers so therefore it wasn't the best thriller it's not like the kind of what you would expect from someone who tends to write thrillers it was also i think ya so it just you know the stakes weren't as high as usual there wasn't as much suspense or as much tension as you would usually wish for in a thriller but i was completely willing to look past that because as i said before it kind of just reminded me of this the horror movies that i like to watch so i just enjoyed it and I sort of take took it at face value and just really enjoyed sort of the way it was written like I don't have any major things to fault I know a lot of people say that they feel like the main character and the relationship she has with a boy feels kind of like off and not realistic I was kind of again willing to look past that and I just rated this purely based on how much I enjoyed it which was a lot so I gave it four stars. Another thing that's kind of I think for a lot of people can be a downfall but for me I was completely fine with it was it was just a very cliche book like there are a lot of cliches I think the cliches go with the fact that it is kind of that campy slasher thriller horror kind of book. Obviously there's going to be cliches in there we kind of have like the new girl with a secret past trope. It's about this girl who has to move from Hawaii to Nebraska I believe to sort of restart her life and live with her grandma because something happened when she was living in Hawaii and we don't find out until sort of further into the book and she is obviously the new girl she's got the secret past and then all of a sudden people start dying getting killed you know and they're trying to figure out who it is that's doing it whilst also trying to figure out <laughs> who's going to be killed next you can see kind of where the slasher like the the fun slasher vibes come from it was just a lot of fun to read but yeah there were definitely a lot of cliches so if you're not a fan of cliches i would not read it mm. i mean i would still recommend it i basically recommend it to everyone 
but don't go into it thinking you're gonna get this like mind-blowing thriller because it just definitely wasn't that but it was a lot of fun so as i said i gave it four stars i like the ideas of the kill and nobody knows who it is yeah okay I'm going to talk about three books that I read in a video. These three books I read for a video and I will again link that somewhere and that was my reading The Three Bears Book Cottages favourite books and that video was very successful for me because I found a lot of books that I really enjoyed and you know I had a fun time reading them and you can see that in the video. I'm not going to go into depth about what I thought about them however I will say the first book that I read was A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik this is the first book in the Scholomance series. I don't know if it's going to be a series or a trilogy, but basically the next book is coming out, I believe, this year in September or something like that. Very exciting. I enjoyed this book a lot. I gave it 4.5 stars. Basically, if I'm going to give an overview, this book is about this school where kids who have magical abilities go to learn and to build up their powers and stuff like that and the way that they learn instead of just being you know like going into lessons and having teachers they kind of teach themselves they kind of have like it's hard to explain the actual like education system but the most important part is that the way that you graduate is essentially by fighting a bunch of monsters and like either you die or you graduate that's kind of like the two options so we're following i believe a character who is in the like second to last year we're just following her and we're just seeing what's going on with her at that school for that like i think it's probably set over a year or something like that and it was just a lot of fun i really enjoyed the mag magic system it felt like it was very inspired by like real life witchcraft one thing i will say about this book is that it's not like the most plot driven book in the world but i really enjoyed that i kind of just enjoyed reading about the characters i thought that the characters were very charming and very interesting to read about and they were definitely sort of the driving force of the book so if you like character based character driven books then i would 100 percent recommend it it was just a lot of fun to read i also really loved the relationship between two of the main characters l and orion I thought that they had a very interesting, very dynamic relationship that I enjoyed a lot. I was just thoroughly cap captivated. Captivated, that's the word. I was thoroughly captivated by it. I really enjoyed it. The next book that I read for that video was We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. This was by far my favourite book of the video. So, spoiler alert, I gave it five stars. It was great. I think it's a very polarising book because there seems to be some people that really don't like it and some people that absolutely love it. I was definitely in the latter group. I really enjoyed this. It was just... I think it went straight up to being one of my favourite books of all time just because it was just really fun and it was really well written and i said a lot about it in that video so you should go definitely go and watch it i had a lot of thoughts and it was one of the only books for a very long time where i like physically had a sort of knee-jerk reaction of being shocked at sort of what was going on so i really enjoyed it for that i also just it was a book that was really easy to get through it's quite short i think it's around 200 pages so it was just easy to get through and i didn't find that there was a dull moment like I didn't find there was any point where I was like actually I don't want to read it was very good I very much enjoyed it as I said five stars very happy to have read that and then the last book that I read in that video was The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett last year I read The Mothers by Britt Bennett and I just wasn't super enamored by it like I didn't really enjoy it that much I think I gave it three stars the vanishing half however was definitely a lot more up my alley I really enjoyed the storyline I just enjoyed everything that it was talking about this book essentially is about two very light skinned black twins who at the age of 16 decide to run away and eventually one of them sort of turns back and, and goes back to the town that she grew up in and the other one goes and starts living her life as a white person like passing as a white person it's just following the dynamics and the difference between living passing as a white person and living your life as a black person seeing the difference of like overt racism from white people and then the kind of racism that you don't think about which is the racism between black people of like the darker your skin is the less worth you have racism is obviously very prevalent as it's still a topic that we talk a lot about but i think we forget to realize how much it sort of trickled down into not only um the psyche of white people but also of black people sort of 
believing that they are of less worth because their skin is darker than white people. It was just a very interesting thing to read about and I really enjoyed it. I ended up giving it four stars. I think just because of the way that it's kind of split up into storylines, I found that there was one storyline I gravitated a lot more towards, which I think had it have been more even, I would have given it five stars, but I just, because I was gravitating more towards one storyline, I just didn't feel like I could give it five stars, but it's definitely a book I would recommend. Once again, this is like a lot of people's favorites. So I would 100% recommend anyone to read it it was an enjoyable book whilst also obviously bringing up some topics there was a lot of intersectionality a lot of topics covered and it's just definitely a book that's 100 percent worth talking about one book i'm not going to talk too much about because this is a book i'm going to be talking about in a video that i'm hoping to have finished soon but i honestly don't know that is i'll be gone in the dark by michelle mcnamara this is a true crime book it's about the golden state killer there's just really not much to say about it because it is true crime I did not give it a rating because I don't give most non-fiction ratings. However, I will say that it was definitely one of the better true crime books that I've read. I also think that like anyone that's interested in reading it should know that it's not 100% true crime. It's also a lot about Michelle McNamara's like actual search trying to figure out who the Golden State Killer was. So it's also about her as well as being about the Golden State Killer. It's not as straightforward as just being a timeline of the events but it was an enjoyable book it's definitely one of the best written true crime books i haven't read a lot but from what i've heard it's definitely one of the best written and i could tell just from reading it that she really knew what she was doing when she was writing it that made it really enjoyable because a lot of the time non-fiction can be very heavy whereas this was a lot more certain parts of it felt almost like it was made up because of the way that she was writing there's just not really much else for me to say i would not see, say that it's like a comprehensive like list of all the things that he's done or anything there's so many crimes that it would actually be impossible probably to like actually describe them all in detail so i think that she did a very good job with it if you like true crime i would 100 percent recommend it the next book that i read was jade city this was as part of a buddy read with a lot of my friends here on booktube we did do a live show so hopefully i'll link that somewhere for you to go and watch if you want to hear our thoughts on jade city i ended up giving it four stars i thought it was a very good book it was like an urban fantasy which basically is just about two warring clans it focuses mainly on one clan and sort of on the family dynamics in that clan and stuff like that and the different characters i really as i said i enjoyed the family dynamic i i really enjoyed the family dynamics I really enjoyed all the characters. I felt like they were all very interesting and sort of unique. This book is the first book in a trilogy and I think we're gonna keep on buddy reading these books. So that's very exciting. I think the setting as well made it really interesting because it has feels of like both being sort of like Imperial China but also being almost like Blade Runner-esque. It felt very sort of traditional whilst also being quite modern it was it's kind of hard to explain but i really enjoyed the setting but yeah i just really enjoyed it i gave it four stars i didn't give it five stars because it was just kind of missing that five star feeling but it was definitely very enjoyable definitely recommend it so <laughs> that was all the books i read in june i apologize if this bit video was just kind of a bit disjointed and rambly and i didn't really get great points across i'm just kind of my brain's a bit frazzled at the moment so hopefully it will be getting better soon i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video then you're more than welcome to subscribe it means the world to me and i will see you in my next video hit the thumbs up